Ken Trey here with Lenny Van Gilder for SportsNola.com. It's our first NBC weekend preview brought to you by First NBC Bank with locations throughout the greater New Orleans area. Thanks to First NBC Bank for their continuous support of SportsNola.com. Well, it's a busy football weekend, a very big one at that. Starts on Saturday, Tulane with a winnable game. They fell just short on the road against UTEP a week ago, but they've got an opponent this week they can beat. Really? Next two or three weeks, actually. But UAB, the next team up, and uh, a couple of one and six teams, a couple of first-year head coaches, a lot in common here. UAB's probably got the best offense that Tulane has faced in a while. And it, this, if Tulane can continue to play better on offense as it has the last couple of weeks, this could really turn into a shootout kind of football game, a kind of entertaining game you want to see. Of course, you'll have to go to the Dome to see it. There's no television for this one. But it, it has the makings of a very entertaining football game despite the records. And Tulane has fared pretty well against UAB most recently. Yeah, they have. Uh, last year, uh, probably the, the best performance a Tulane football team has put up the last four or five years was that win last year at UAB, a dominating performance. And uh, up until two weeks ago, that was Tulane's last win. So it, it unfortunately was the last one that we saw there for over a year. No real presence of a running game, but the passing game rejuvenated with Ryan Griffin under the center. Yeah, Griffin's been terrific the last two weeks. A couple of 300-yard games. You know, Orleans Starkle played the most that he's played this season last week. Did get 15 carries. Depends on what you're going to see there. The one thing Curtis Johnson mentioned on Tuesday is he can go about three or four plays in a row, and then that high ankle sprain, you know, just kind of tires out that ankle a little bit. He's got to take a break and kind of rejuvenate it, and then he can come back in and play a few more plays, and then the same thing happens. So until he's 100%, you're not going to see the Orleans Starkwood that we saw the last two years. LSU enjoys an off week before the big game with Alabama. Of course, the news off the field, not good for LSU. And we've seen the last of Tyron Matthew at LSU. That is clear now. And it's really unfortunate when you look at his situation, where he's been, what he could be, what he may be. He severely hurt his stock in the NFL draft, where he figures to go next if he can keep his life straight enough. And as for Jordan Jefferson, disappointment, and the same holds true for the others. Yeah, really. And, I mean, these are four guys that are not on the team this year that were, were involved in the, in the arrest yesterday. And, but, but still, it's a, it's a black eye on LSU's program. These are guys who were affiliated with the program, even though they're not there now. It's it's still a distraction. Thankfully, there's an off week here. You put it behind you, come back and get ready. And, of course, the focus will be all on the field next week with Alabama coming to town next Saturday. And LSU struggles offensively will be magnified against a great Alabama defense unless they find a way to achieve some balance. They really do need to. They need to complete some passes. And, you know, Zach Mettenberger, you know, was not at his best against Texas A&M by any means, but the one thing he did do is avoid mistakes. Yeah, he, he missed on a, on a lot of long passes, but he didn't underthrow them where the A&M defenders could intercept. He overthrew guys. So make that adjustment, and, of course, you know, a lot of factors will, will come into play there. Uh, be interesting to see, you know, what LSU has. Be interesting to see, you know, what Alabama has on tap. You, you saw clearly there were huge adjustments made from the first game to the second game a year ago. What will we see 11 months later? The Hornets in Miami to take on the Heat. Anthony Davis gets to see LeBron James again. And the Hornets have lost four straight. They have a lot of players not playing, but uh, the real concern is clearly at guard. With or without the players that are there are not there because do they really have a point guard that can start in the NBA on this team? That's a great question. And uh, hopefully, you know, the, the health situation resolves itself here quickly. Sounds like there's a chance Eric Gordon may practice on Sunday. You know, if that's the case, you maybe maybe you got him back ready to play for the for the regular season opener come Wednesday night. With Eric Gordon, who knows? We just yeah. got to wait and see. Who knows? Jason Smith, we'll see. Got to expect he'll probably try to give it a go next Wednesday. And ditto for Austin Rivers, although you never know with an angle sprain. Of course, the Saints are in Denver to take on the Broncos in the primetime game on Sunday night. And again, must-win situation for the Saints. They have to win three of their next four to legitimately have a chance at the postseason. This is a tough place to play. It's altitude. You're not used to it. It's going to be colder. And the Broncos have their Darber up. They're playing very well, and they feel pretty good about themselves. They really do. And both teams, you know, obviously the way the Saints have played the last couple of weeks, they're feeling a lot better about things. Yeah, this, like we mentioned with Tulane, this has all the makings of a shootout. You know, Drew Brees, Pey Peyton Manning, you know, two guys who can, you know, light it up and just, uh, you know, find, find receivers from, from any spot on the field. 
Yeah, it wouldn't surprise me to see 700, 750 or more passing yards combined between uh, those two guys, 60 or more points on the scoreboard between the two teams. It should be an entertaining game to watch. But. And, and Joe Vitt is back. We'll see what kind of impact that has. World Series, I don't see any way the Giants lose the way they're playing. They're just playing lights out. They really are. We could have never said that a week ago, you know, when – they had fallen behind 3-1 in St. Louis, and they've won the last five games in very impressive fashion. And, you know, it, the, the baseball gods are smiling on them right now. They're getting the breaks. You look at the hit that Hunter Pence got, you know, the other night with the broken bat. The ball hit the bat three times. Amazing camera work. You can see with those those, those cameras at 3,000 frames a second. The bunt last night uh, by Gregor Blanco that just hugs the line. You know, like he said, 99 times out of 100, that's going foul. You know, that's the one time it goes fair. You know, the breaks are going their way right now. Will we continue to get two more wins? We'll see. Well, it's going to be a great weekend for sports unquestionably. We look forward to it. And, of course, we thank First NBC Bank for their support. Lenny, it's always a pleasure. A pleasure. See you Monday. All right, that's our First NBC weekend preview. Check us out on Monday for our review. And until then, for Lenny, I'm Kenny. Have a great weekend. God bless.